So you may be wondering, we already did a Mandel Brot set video, so why are you doing one again? Well, you know when like you create an entire Mandelbrot renderer using Python, and then you create a complex class to ha handle complex numbers, and then you realize that that's already built into Python, so you don't need to do that. Yeah, sad, right? So, uh, <laughs> let's try to like stop doing that and... So today, instead of using this entire complex class that I made last time, we're going to make a new version of mandelbrot.py and we're going to use the built-in complex class in Python. <laughs> so yeah, this won't take as much work though because we already have the mandelbrot function and all we have to do is to translate this to the Python version of the mandelbrot class and uh, yeah, that will be fun. Actually, I don't know if it'll be fun or not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, you ask, how do we use this complex class that's built into Python? Well, in my original project, uh, I just made it so that you could input a real number and an imaginary number as a constructor, and it'll construct a complex class uh, object. However, um, it's slightly easier in the Python built-in version um, because all you have to do is do like brackets like that and then do your real part plus and then your imaginary part and then after the imaginary part add the suffix j. Why not i? Well because i is often used in loops like that's kind of the standard so you can't use i for that. So we use j for like that. However this won't work if I like define a uh say variable. Say a equals like something like 10 or something. I can't use a and then put it in front of it because then that would make it think that aj is a variable in itself. So how do we do that? Well, in that case, it's simple. We just use the same constructor as I created in my own complex class. So like we just use complex and it's a class complex, complex, real, imaginary. And then we just do this, say like 5, 10. And then this will uh, make the real part 5 and the imaginary part 10. And this is our complex number object that's built right into Python. So yeah, I went on through all this trouble in making this complex class when I didn't know that there was actually a normal class built in. So yeah, I kind of died. Okay, so it's time to construct the Mandelbrot function. The Mandelbrot function, as in the last video, computes the uh, Mandelbrot output of a complex number, basically. So it figures out how many iterations it takes for the complex number to exceed two. Uh, but if it doesn't exceed two in the number of iterations, they'll return zero. So it returns zero if it's inside the Mandelbrot set. And in that case, it will be rendered black. Also, I use Piglet for the um, graphics. So yeah. So let's copy and paste this define Mandelbrot function here. Uh oh, I can't select. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do that. Copy this over here. And all we have to do is to like, um, basically we just delete this, like something like this or something. And like, we do that as well. So basically what we have to do is we have to translate this entire function, except in terms, instead of using the complex class that I created, use the complex class in built in Python. So that's what I have to do. Okay, I think I have successfully translated the piece of code in my original work to the piece of code here, which is one that's compatible with the built-in complex class um, in Python. And so basically, I haven't included my class.py thing. Now I only have this because I know that the complex class is already built in to Python. So I don't have to write a whole new class for that. All right, let's analyze what's happened here. So I've made it to be complex zero zero and stuff. And for i in range iterations, that's just normal. But here is what has changed. Update equals update squared plus value. I can use operations now because it is built in. So I can use these operations however I want. The syntax works just like real numbers. If update dot imagine. So I've squared it. You can see that you can do exponents in complex number arithmetic as well. So that's very useful. So I've figured out how far it is from the origin of a graph times times 0 0.5. So you can see that instead of um, using square root like I did before, I wasn't bothered to import maths. So I just took it to the 0 0.5, which is half. And uh, yeah, that's the same thing as square rooting. So why don't we test this out to see if it works? I don't even know if it works or not. So let's see. Um, so what do we do to test it? Let's, okay, let's pick something, uh, let's pick a value in the Mandelbrot set that we know 
um, is inside the Mandelbrot set, like zero. So let's go like, um, so to construct that, we are going to put in zero. You don't have to enter the imaginary value because uh, that automatically is set to zero if you don't input anything into that. So now we have to just get the Mandelbrot set like that. And um, that requires a complex value, which it does. And then it requires the number of iterations you want it to uh, do. So that's 100. Let's do 100 iterations. And let's go print. So now it prints the thing. And yeah, so we're going to print the output of that, see if it works. And hey, it prints out zero, which is correct, because zero is indeed inside the Mandelbrot set. So it prints out zero if um, the number that you input is inside the Mandelbrot set, which is what we want. So now I should say it's the part that's a little bit more difficult, which is rendering the graphics. Now in my old one, the majority of the code in my Mandelbrot.py Python file was actually just rendering the thing. That is like setting all the batch nodes so that it could all be rendered. And yeah, that took me a very long time. I was experimenting with different types of shading and um, how to scale it properly so that it would work. But luckily we have all of this stuff already for us because that's what I did in the last video. So yeah, so I just need to get, get this in like, so I just need to again translate this thing to the metalbrot2.py. So yeah, <laughs> this is gonna take a long time. Which, it didn't take a long time. And even if it did, you wouldn't have to watch it, which is good. <laughs> all I had to do was just delete a line. <laughs> yes, that is actually all I had to do. So, without further ado, let's try and run this. Let's see if it works. Also, I imported the shading as here, so yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That took a while, but it was pretty quick. I, I think it was quicker than the original. But let's have a look. Moment of truth. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> the Mandelbrot has been rendered. And yeah, Mandelbrot set completed again. That was, that was pretty easy. Converting from the Mandelbrot complex number flask that I made specifically for this purpose to the built-in one. I think the built-in one was faster and more optimized than the original, which is good. When I made this program at first, I expected it to be faster than the original version because I thought that um, there would be a lot more optimization going on in the complex number class that Python uses instead of like my one, which was terribly optimized and uh, really bad. So, and yeah, I think that is the case right now. I mean, like seriously though, that was, I think that was way faster than the original where <laughs> I wrote my own class, but uh, we can only tell if it's faster using a test. So let's test both of the programs to see how fast they are. All right, I compiled both of the programs into .pyc files so that it would run faster. And I ran it on my Intel i7 8th gen CPU. And here's the results. So the previous time, which is the original Mandelbrot generator, the time for that was 7 minutes and 38 seconds. So, and the new time, which is the optimized time, is, drum roll, 3 minutes. Nice! So I'm really happy with the results, and yeah, because basically we halved the time just by converting the data type, and yeah, that wasn't a very long video, uh, which I'm sorry about, but I have lots of stuff to do in this uh, holiday, so yeah, I won't be able to upload as many videos as like last time, but whatever. Anyways, thank you for watching, uh, I'll see you later. Bye!